Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and in this video, we're gonna go hands-on with the new Razer Core X Chroma external GPU. You might remember last year's Razer Core X, Razer's plug and play eGPU solution for Mac, and now Razer has released the new Razer Core X Chroma, which looks quite similar to the previous model. It's a massive all metal enclosure with a Razer logo on one side and some grates to help with airflow pretty much all throughout. It's a very minimal enclosure to say the least. The Razer Core X Chroma is a true plug and play solution for Mac OS, and it also boasts a completely tool-free setup, which is always nice. So in order to add your own GPU, simply grab the handle on the back and pull. From here, you'll see where the GPU connects and a single thumb screw to remove the plate. Unscrew and remove this plate and then grab any of the compatible AMD GPUs. For this video, we have a Radeon RX 570 and insert it into the enclosure. Once everything is snapped into place, simply reuse that thumb screw to tighten the GPU into place. You will also need to snap in the power cable into the GPU as well, which Razer has neatly tucked into the case already. If everything is all connected and in the right place, insert the GPU back into the enclosure and rotate the handle in the locked position and you're all set. The back of the Razer Core X Chroma should now have four USB Type-A ports, a single Thunderbolt 3 port, a gigabit ethernet port, and then whatever IO your GPU has, which in this case, the RX 570 has two display ports, two HDMI ports, and support for DVI. So this is one of the first major differences between last year's Razer Core X and this year's Core X Chroma, is that now with the addition of these extra ports, you can transform your laptop into a full desktop class setup with a new external graphics card, and then the extra USB and ethernet ports, as well as a new 700 watt power supply, which is a slight step up from the 650 watt from last year's model, which is capable of charging laptops up to 100 watts, and the last biggest difference is the new Chroma feature. Yes, it wouldn't be a Razer product without a little bit of RGB lighting. You'll notice the RGB lights the moment you turn on the GPU. Quick side note, the Core X Chroma comes with one power cable and a very small Thunderbolt 3 cable, but Razer does sell a much longer Thunderbolt 3 cable, which I highly recommend getting in order to have some flexibility on where you store this thing. In my opinion, the Core X Chroma does look really cool with the RGB lights, but if you're going for a more clean or minimal desk setup, the giant black metal box on your desk is really going to stand out. If you have a place a bit less obvious, but you can still see the RGB lights and you'd like to store it there, chances are you're probably going to need a bigger Thunderbolt 3 cable, otherwise you're stuck with it a foot away from your MacBook. The Razer Chroma feature is one of the biggest changes to this eGPU, but if you're planning on using this on a Mac exclusively, then this feature will be heavily limited. In fact, the software to control and customize this feature is not compatible with macOS at all, at least at this current moment in time, and I'm not sure when it will be, so you're pretty much just stuck with rotating RGB lights. For those of you planning to use this on a Windows PC, however, all you have to do is simply download the Razer Synapse software to access more Chroma features. Finally, the main advantage to having a plug and play eGPU is the ability to boost your GPU performance considerably all by plugging in one single Thunderbolt 3 cable. The 2018 MacBook Pro that I'm using in this video already has an Intel Graphics 630 and a dedicated Radeon Pro 555X GPU, and for OpenCL and Metal scores, there was an obvious increase in performance between the Intel 630 and the Radeon Pro 555X. But when you introduce the eGPU with the Radeon RX 570, benchmarks and performance increases dramatically as OpenCL and Metal scores are more than double that of the dedicated 555X. Running the Heaven benchmarks will pretty much give you the same results. If you run on high or ultra with full 1080 resolution, my MacBook Sans eGPU would struggle to maintain 24 to 30 frames per second consistently, which is not great for gaming. So if you're using an eGPU to upgrade for gaming, uh, once you introduced that eGPU, I was able to see the frames per second double and maintain 60 frames per second at ultra settings. Also, most gaming and some applications will probably need to be run off an external monitor, so keep that in mind when deciding whether to purchase this eGPU or not. Last year's Razer Core X came in at $299, and this year you get those extra ports, bigger power supply, gigabit ethernet support, and the Razer Chroma for an additional $100, so coming in at $399. So let me know in the comments what you think of the Core X Chroma, and if you use an eGPU with your Mac, what do you use it for in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.